Hello friends, uh, today we are going to solve the two sum problem. This is a very easy problem on lead code and uh, this is uh, also the first problem. So we are going to start uh, with this one and uh, basically the problem statement mentions that we are given an integer of uh, numbers and we are also given a target integer and we need to return the indices out of uh, the given array and uh, we need to provide the indices that basically sum up to meet the target value and uh, it also states that it, it we only have exactly one solution so we don't have to worry about having multiple pairs that sum up to the target number and also we need to make sure that we do not use the same element twice uh, and uh, we can return answer in any order so this is a little bit helpful now the reason that uh, it is mentioning that we may not use same element twice is for a scenario like this so say for an example uh, we need to we need we are given an input array like this one uh, two one uh, three and we need to see uh, that can we create the target of four so here we can see that actual answer is one plus three but we if we if we were to use uh, something like two plus two it will also become four but this would not be correct so we wouldn't be doing that uh, this is just a note and uh, also one more thing that is not mentioned in this problem statement here but it is shown that uh, we can basically use the scenario so say if we have something like 3 and 3 and we are given the target uh, as uh, 6 so basically we can uh, return in this case we can use uh, 3 plus 3 because though they are they have the same value they are separate and uh, elements so this is just something that we will keep a note of and now let's uh, start looking towards the solution okay so let's start with a bro first of all brute force approach and uh, say for an example we are given an input array something like this uh, where we have five elements uh, 8 9 3 1 and 15 and uh, say that we are given a target element that we need to find the value is 12 and we need to check that is there any pair that exists in this uh, particular this particular uh, input and array that sums up to the value 12 and we can clearly see that the pair 9 3 uh, is making the uh, is coming up as sum as 12 but uh, let's see what could be the brute force approach so in brute force what we are going to do is we are just going to make pairs across uh, every single one of the elements on this particular uh, input array and uh, see that any pair comes up uh, to have sum of 12. So first of all we can start with 8 and we will just make a pair of 8 and 9. So sum of 8 and 9 which is not 12 so we would not be checking that. Next we can check the pair. 8 and 3 and we can see that th this sum is actually 11 so it's still not uh, equal to target uh, same with 8 and 1 which is 9 and uh, same goes for 8 and 15 which is 23 which is again not true and not what we want so once we are done with uh, with an entire iteration we can determine that there is no pair in which uh, 8 comes in that sums up to 12 so what would be the next approach in the next approach we will start with the second element in the array and we would start by again making the pairs and we can see that uh, 9 and 3 is 9 and 3 sums up to 12 which is what we want so basically we have found our solution and uh, our solution in this case would be we need to return the indexes of the values 9 and 3 so our solution would be 1 and 2 uh, as an output array and uh, basically we would be done now brute force approach uh, this works but what are the drawbacks for this particular approach uh, first of first we can see is that we need to we need to iterate through every single element for every single element in the array so basically essentially we are looping for n elements we are uh, making uh, n into n minus 1 iterations so overall if we see the time complexity 
uh, it's really bad it's actually big o of n square which is a really bad time complexity and which is not what we want at all so let's see that can there be any other approach with where we can do something better than this and uh, have better uh, time complexity uh, so let's try with another approach okay let's try to do uh, and see what we can do in the second approach uh, in the in the next approach we are going to see that can we do something with the input input array and uh, if we sort the input array uh, we get a result like this and we can try to see that by sorting the array can we make our life easier and can we uh, find the pair faster than what we were doing in the brute force approach so sorted array should look something like this 1 3 8 9 and 15 and this is done for the given input array and we need to find the value 12 so the approach here should be that say for an example if we find uh, the first value in an element 11 we can determine that if in the remaining if in the remaining array is does there exist a value which is uh, 12 which uh, which is target minus 1 so 1 is the value of the array that we have just chosen and which is 11 so if in this particular array if there exists the value 11 essentially that would be our pair and we we would be good to go and we would have found the values uh, for for our solution and now let's see can we do it and the answer in this case would be that uh, no we don't have value 11 over here uh, so we can start we can check with for the second value in in the given input parameter that uh, can we do something with value 3 so say for an example if we are given value 3 and uh, we do 12 minus 3 so basically we need to see that if 9 exists in this particular array and we can clearly see 9 exists uh, over here now how do we find that if 9 exists or not we can just simply run a binary sort in this particular array and we can come to the middle point and we can see that the middle point is 8 so we need to check the right side of the array and not on the left side so we can ignore all of these ele uh, elements on the left of array and on the right side uh, if we check the middle value we can essentially find 9 and we can pretty quickly determine that there exists a pair which is uh, the value 3 and 9 in the given array and uh, with which we can make the target sum as 12 and next step would be to go to the original array to find their index positions and once we have the index positions again we can return the answer as uh, value 1 and 2 and we would be done uh, now notice here that because we are doing binary search on this particular array uh, with every iteration or every search we need to do we are essentially eliminating half of the values in the given uh, given input array and uh, we are only left with half of the elements and if we keep making more iterations essentially every time we, we so say if we have a huge input array and we need to do a lot of calculations for binary search uh, it doesn't matter what is the number of elements we need to go through because essentially with every iteration we would be uh, removing either left half or right half of the subtree and which is very powerful so now let's try to calculate that what would be the time complexity in this case and uh, for this particular scenario the time complexity would be slightly better than our brute force approach uh, because we are essentially uh, we are essentially doing n log n time uh, to sort the array and after that we are uh, essentially doing a log n time to search the values but so uh, our final time complexity would be n log n now this surely seems a much bigger improvement rather than uh, n square because n square was 
huge uh, in terms of time complexity and we are able to significantly bring it down to a much smaller number uh, now we need to see that can we can we do any other approach where we can do it faster than n log n so essentially a big o of n time so let's try to see if we can do it or not okay now let's try to see that if we can solve this problem in big o of n time and yes we are able to solve this in big o of n time by using hash table so how let me just show it to you so say for an example we create a new hash map and uh, we create a new hash, hash map with uh, the key and value pairs as following so our key would be the values and the value would be uh, whatever the index number that particular element has inside an array and we can start with value 8 so with value 8 if we see uh, that if we are checking with value 8 we need to see that if uh, in the in this particular array uh, 12 minus 8 which means if 4 exists in this particular remaining array we can determine that yes there exists a pair in which 8 is a part of it and we can create we can uh, provide it as target and we we would essentially have the result for the given problem uh, so first we, we we can try to check in the hash map that whether there exists a key whose value is 4 if it doesn't exist we will enter this entry of array inside the hash map and uh, we would set up the key as 8 and we would set up its value as the index value of this particular element so it would be zero now let's uh, check for the next item so next item is nine and if we were to check with nine we basically need to check that uh, 12 minus nine so if three exists in this hash map no it does not exist so we can add nine into our hash map and we would add its value as well uh, as the indices uh, again we check with the value three and basically 12 minus 3 would be 9 so bingo uh, 9 exists in our hash map and we know that uh, 3 is also uh, 3 should also be part of the answer so because we are iterating on the loop we know that uh, what is the position of 3 is and uh, we also know what is the position of uh, index of the value 9 which is stored over here in the hash map and basically uh, based on the based on these two findings we can just simply return the value uh, uh, to uh, our code and uh, we can just return one and two and basically we would be done in our case now for this particular scenario the time complexity would be big o of n which is a much bigger improvement than our previous two solutions and uh, the faulty thing in this one is that we need to create an additional hash map so space complexity would also be big o of n however this would still be the most optimal solution for this problem and uh, yeah this is uh, simple and hope you like the solution like the video and now let's go towards coding okay let's try to run the solution for this problem and uh, let's complete the coding for this problem so first of all we would need a map to basically identify uh, to basically store the values uh, so let's create it new hash map and after that we are going to run a for loop uh, where we are going to run it from uh, starting to the end of uh, an array right, less than. now the first thing we would do is we'll find what is the difference between uh, that we need to find inside the uh, inside the given hash map so difference would be uh, the number of uh, element we are checking 
target minus number of elements that we are checking and basically we need to see that if our map uh, contains this uh, particular element if it does contain essentially we can simply return the values in our input array which would be map dot get and i if not we simply add the value to map of i and we also provide we, al we also add the indices to the map and if the loop runs over and we haven't found the value we return null because we are given that there will always be exactly one solution available to this problem let's try to run it and looks like we made some mistake and we did not provide the if statement runs and yeah so we can see that our code runs pretty fast and we are not having uh, much issues so looks like we are good and uh, yeah let me know how you like it thank you